Welcome to this episode on the history of the television. Electronic television was first successfully demonstrated in San Francisco in 1927. Philo Taylor Farnsworth, 21-year-old inventor who tested a system that could form moving images, code them to radio waves, and transform back into a picture on a screen. The mechanical television system scanned images using a rotating disc with holes arranged into a spiral pattern. RCA, the company that had recently dominated the radio business with its two NBC networks, invested $50 million to the development of the television. By 1939, RCA televised the opening of the New York World's Fair, making President Franklin D. Roosevelt the first president to appear on television. RCA also started selling 5 by 12 televisions and broadcast at regular programs. The first televised baseball game happened the same year, between Princeton and Columbia Universities. In 1931, Columbia Broadcasting System CBS come arose as RCA's main competitor in radio and television as it began broadcasting. Early television and its cameras were very primitive such as single cameras recording whole baseball games, making it very poor quality. World War II slowed the production of televisions, as companies like RCA focused on war production. The production of televisions was slowed down even more by the rise of the FM radio and the battle over the government and its regulations. The Federal Communications Commission ruled that NBC had to sell one of its radio networks, upheld in 1943. The second network became the American broadcast company ABC. Television channels remained in certain cities, such as Chicago, Philadelphia, Los Angeles and New York. National commercial broadcasting did not come until 1947. By 1949, many forms of television programs, such as newscasts, situation comedies, variety shows and dramas borrowed from the radio. NBC and CBS took funds from their radio programs, and later television would take over the radio commercial wise. The number of television sets rose from 6,000 in 1946 to about 12 million in 1951. By 1955, half of the United States homes had one. Between 1953 and 1955, television programming began to depart from the original radio like format. Television programming moved on to televising more variety of television shows and movies. Programming that dominated NBC and CBS in the mid-1950s was theater. An example would be 12 Angry Men in 1954 by Reginald Rose. This faded off in the 1960s as viewers began to prefer dramas and comedies. The first video recorder was invented by Ampex in 1956. The first televised presidential debate, the 1960 presidential election. President John F. Kennedy proved to the public how the television helped him win the election, as how it seemed as Richard Nixon had won according to the radio. Kennedy's assassination in 1963 proved how powerful television had become. The Vietnam War and the media brought many problems to President Lyndon B. Johnson and the government. The public witnessed war events and proved the government wrong in many ways. Color television came by 1964. Color sets were only compatible with the CBS color system. RCA benefited, as black and white sets were not compatible with color programming. During the 1960s and 70s, America was limited to watching the three major networks, CBS, NBC and ABC. Initial competition between CBS and NBC, then ABC rose to the power later on. Cable began to rise quietly in small towns as services that received and broadcasted programming from the closest large city. By 1971, cable had more than 80,000 subscribers in New York. Networks designed for cable began to appear, such as home box office HBO. WTBS in 1976, C-S.P.A.N. Ease. PN for Sports, and Nickelodeon All in 1979. 
Cable News Network CNN in 1980. During the 1980s, viewers could now record or rent programs recorded on video cassettes and watch them at home. Video games benefited from this. Cable networks grew more throughout the 80s and 90s, with the rise of direct broadcast satellite television. Success of the Fox Network, UPN and WB The government came up with television ratings of programs in 1996, such as TVG General Audience, TV 14 Unsuitable for People Under 14 Years of Age, TV Ma for Mature Audience. All networks except NBC agreed to add V for violence, S for sex, L for coarse language and E for suggestive dialogue. High definition television was introduced in 1997, transmission began in 1998. Standard definition and high definition televisions picked up different channels. High definition television was again modified in 2006. This would allow for further convergence between computers, internet and television. In 1998, it was possible to view video through the internet. The rise of computers made it easy for video to reach the public. The switch between analog television and digital made it even easier to watch between television, computer and eventually cell phones. In average, people today watch about two and a half hours of television per day. Thank you, and we'll see you next time.